wait to have a baby. Now, I know what you're all thinking. She's just a kid, but I've got it all figured out. First, I'll attend my dream college. Then, start my dream job. Of course, marry my dream husband, and together we'll design our dream baby. I've always wanted a baby with blue eyes and dark hair, maybe a little bit of astigmatism because babies with glasses are cute. Really, by the time I'm going to be able to have children, I'll even be able to decide the height, the intelligence, and any desired trait. This sounds like a dream, doesn't it? Being able to design your perfect child. Actually, being able to design generations and generations. But who is giving consent to this? Certainly not the unborn baby. I mean, who are we to alter millions of years of evolution just for a baby with blue eyes, a high IQ, and world-class speed. We have the technology to play God, to mess with nature. It's called CRISPR. What a funny name. With CRISPR, we can cut out undesired parts of DNA and replace them with arbitrarily generated desirable traits. Does it still sound like a dream? Picture this. In 15 years, you and your partner have a normal child, which means that she is not genetically modified. Let's say her name is Maya. Your neighbors, on the other hand, decided to go down a different path and named their genetically modified daughter, Emma. Now, Emma is smarter, prettier, more talented, and scientifically proven to be better than your child. She's the perfect child, perfectly designed, but there has always been something off about her. She has to go to a different school, uh, lead a different life, life which is very different from that of your child. I mean, after all, she's a designer baby, perhaps a trophy child. Emma lives just next door, and somehow you know that she never gets sick, she never gets hurt or trips easily. She's definitely an asset to the government, who will most likely never have to spend large sums of money for her health care. Well then, maybe even the government might start to promote the production of designer babies, and your little Maya will find herself alone, filled in a world with perfect humans. It wouldn't be the first time that the government controlled or tried to control childbirth, whether the number, the mental, or the physical qualities of the offspring. A modern example could be China's one-child policy. But I think that the most frightening example of eugenics was during the Nazi period. Hitler wanted a superior race, the Aryan race. He went through great lengths to achieve this, firstly by concentration camps, and then by sterilizing or executing individuals which he judged to be handicapped or credens. Is this the world that you want your children to inherit? Is this what you want our race to become? Oh, and Maya, you love her just as much with her messy hair, slightly asymmetrical nose, and that little cough which never seems to go away. But maybe, just maybe, you won't be able to stop yourself from comparing her to her friend Emma. And trust me when I say that you won't be the only one. So will colleges, employers, potential mates? And what if one day she comes back crying, asking, why am I not like Emma? All you know is that society has changed. Between your child and Emma, there's an abyss. A superior race has been born, and your child does not belong to it. It's time to ask ourselves really important questions like, who are we? What will we become, and who will decide? IVF is a modern example of designer babies. Selective breeding, which is a type of baby designing, has been around for thousands of years. IVF is already an accepted way of reproducing for infertile parents or those who run the risk of passing on dangerous genetic diseases. In other words, it's already a method of bypassing natural evolution. Now, imagine being a parent who decided to reproduce using IVF. And the doctor mentions that for an extra $1,000, he can eliminate the risk for your child of ever getting Alzheimer's. Now, 
I'm pretty sure that each and every one of you would accept his offer because as a parent, everyone wants the best for his or her child, whether the best job, the best education, or the best genetic trait. Parents are already influencing their child's life so much by imposing a religion, an education, sometimes even a hobby. So why not give them the best traits they need to thrive in the society they live in? In other words, a virtual guarantee of success. Now, this reality seems far away, almost as if it was a post-apocalyptic movie plot. But it's actually closer than what you might imagine. Experimenters in China have already tested this technology on human embryos. Now, it did not go too well, but these are only the early stages of the trial. The good news is that we have an excuse to avoid the production of designer babies. They are simply too dangerous. But what about when this is not an excuse anymore? The first child born from IVF came to light a little over 40 years ago. And since then, five million children have been born through that technology. Five million in four decades. That's a lot. Now, a child like Emma may not be too far away, and the choices scientists make will define and maybe tear apart society as we know it. But then again, where do you draw the line between saving a life and creating a trophy child? And most importantly, who will draw that line? Think about your own children for a second. Is there anything you would change about us except that we're always asking you for money? And if that answer is yes, do you still want a perfect child? Now about the baby, I can wait. Thank you.